Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of this video series where we are putting together the 84 inch Lavochkin LA7 from CY Model. In this episode, we're gonna handle everything at the front of the aircraft. So starting with the motor mount, we're gonna prepare that. We're gonna discuss and even calculate the built-in right thrust that comes from the factory. We're gonna attach the cowling. We're gonna initially mount the Dual Sky GA6000. And then as an added bonus, we're gonna trim the canopy and get the hatch all ready to put on. And finally, we'll end up with some pictures of where we are at this point. So without any further ado, let's head over to the bench and get to work. For this plane, we're gonna be using the Dual Sky GA6000 electric motor, but I just wanted to point out that Dual Sky also has some very nice smaller motors, the 3500R for 35cc applications, the 2000R for 20 to 25cc applications. But as always here in the States, make sure to check out Northwest RC for all of your dual sky needs. The first step is to attach the included aluminum brackets onto the side of the motor box. You're supplied with a bunch of 16 millimeter long M3 bolts, and I actually bought another package of 25 millimeter long bolts just to help bolt it into the frame. We will talk about that a little bit later. I have this up on a box because I'm drilling down uh, for these next three holes. So let's talk about the right thrust built in. If we take some measurements, we have 139 millimeters. Then we have one side, we have 115 millimeters. And on the other side, we have 110 millimeters. So this is at the bottom of the motor box. So what that gives us is that we have a right angle triangle that we have one side is five millimeters, one side is 139 millimeters. And that really gives us a 2.06 degree angle and really what you do here is you solve for c and then that angle we're looking for is actually the arc sine of a over c but if you don't want to do the trig i have a link in the show notes to talk about a right angle calculator where you can put the values in and you're good to go so let's look at the very front where we will be mounting the motor if we look at it from the very front, we can see that the manufacturer has given us about six millimeters offset to account for that right thrust. So I elongated the lines to the top and the bottom and then used the motor as a template. And I already made a hole, but I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna try to enlarge that hole right on that line. And then we're going to drill through and enlarge this hole, put the motor back on, use it as a template to drill the other holes. We're going to need to move the motor out a little bit and the dual sky 6000 does come with appropriate standoffs to about put it in the right place as a typical 60 cc gas motor in fact it comes with extra spaces if you need you know about another quarter inch or so but i wanted to give you a shot of what the motor is going to look like attached to the motor mount and here is the motor mount all ready to go turning around on a turntable and i know i have some some lock nuts missing, but I just wanted to show you the finished product before we attach to the firewall. The good thing about the holes in both the motor mount and the front of the fuse is that you can use a very small clamp, clamp it there and get it exactly situated where you want it before you then drill these holes right in through the fuselage. And here's where I'm gonna be using my 25 millimeter long M3 bolts as pins as we drill the other side but now we're going to take it off and like we always do with epoxy we're going to rough up both surfaces so again i'm not taking any material off you can see the scratches i'm trying to create a rough surface for the epoxy to adhere to we'll do that to the back of the motor mount as well so let's break out the epoxy and what i'm showing you now is that i'm at least starting 
to put epoxy on the tabs of the motor box. So that's gonna do two things. First, it's going to reinforce the motor box pieces, and then it's going to create a direct epoxy connection from the motor box to the front of the fuselage. I'm also gonna do that to the cowl mounting tabs as well. So I'm gonna put more epoxy than you're seeing, but I just wanted to show you that I'm concentrating because you're getting two for one. So now we have epoxy on both sides. We are going to place the motor mount, the firewall up against the front of the fuse and then use those bolts as pins to get everything lined up. Get that on there and then we will tighten up the lock washers from inside the fuse and we should be good to let this sit overnight. To summarize, we have direct epoxy connection between pieces of the motor mount to the front of the fuse, as well as six M3 bolts all the way through the fuse and secured. So next up is mounting the cowl, but before we do that, we wanna make sure we check the blind nuts. One of the things I've learned over the years is to always have my metric tap and drill set because I never ever trust blind nuts from an ARF manufacturer. I don't know if they just destroy them when they're setting them or whatnot, but of these five cowl mounting points, three of these would not take a bolt. So take your time, run the tap through and make sure you have a smooth operation with these M3 cowl mounting bolts. So let's cut a piece of cardboard out and we will mount it to where we're going to drill this hole. And then securely, and I can't stress this enough, but securely tape this so this doesn't move whatsoever. This is going to be your guide. And as we're taping this up, you can see there's a little lip around the front of the fuselage and that is actually helpful because when we put the cowl on, the cowl fits right on that lip and there's no guesswork is the cowl too far back, too far forward? It fits right in that little ridge. So let's get the cowl out. Because of that ridge, there's really no guesswork. In fact, the only guesswork is, is rotational alignment. And you can use the light blue at the bottom to line up that line between the blue and the gray to find out exactly where you want it. Get some pieces of tape and get ready to drill. Whenever I drill through fiberglass, I do it through a piece of painter's tape. It just makes the holes a little bit nicer. And I got the big drill out and my really nice bits and drilling the hole right through here. And we'll take the cowl off and use a hobby knife, a really sharp, a brand new blade and rotate it around. I found this way, it looks elementary, but it really enlarges the hole very nicely. We're gonna do this until we can get a good fit of the bolt through there. And when we're satisfied, we'll take off the tape and we'll see a nice clean hole with no damage to the paint. So let's talk about the canopy and the canopy hatch. So here's the hatch itself. And if you cut away the back and the front, you can kind of pseudo fit it on here. And the thing I wanted to point out is that these rivets, that first line of rivets is on the plastic. So you can kind of align it up and make sure it's centered left to right. Now here's the problem. We take the canopy off and we have this nice, these nice lines where it should fit in, where you should cut it to fit in that little diagram there. Now on the plastic, that is not on here. And when you look at the plastic, you might just blindly cut along that ridge and that's not going to look good. That's not gonna fit in what's on the canopy. So there's really no other way I found but to just get a, use a half a roll of painter's tape and mark it off, do some trial and error, cut away a little bit and just trim it nice. It probably took me about a total of three hours to get it the way I like it. And I attached it with some really small fasteners. And here's a close up shot of the final result. The front part and the sides were, were fine. That 
rear curve was really hard and you can see uh, it doesn't look so great at the very back but no one's ever going to notice that i don't think So here are the final shots. I just have a, a, the only five inch spinner that I had that I really like that size just for looks. But here is the cowl mounted. I used those M3 bolts with neoprene backed washers and I'll probably paint those uh, to fit in. Here's just another shot. You can see the dual sky motor in there all ready to go. Again, I have some, some prop options and some spinner options to come. So everyone, thank you so much for watching everything in the front of the airplane. We have one more assembly video left and that's going to be all the finishing touches, some decals, some painting, showing you the electronics inside. And uh, you know, thanks for being with me. This is nice to see this plane together uh, with the nose and the canopy on for the first time. I'm really excited and we'll see you next time.